Welcome back to part two of our conversation with Andy Marshall, where he tells us how to stay focused on the results, as well as the number one trait Andy looks for when hiring for his companies. Don't go anywhere. Part two is coming up next. Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performers Performers Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak performer in any area of your life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. So, what's next? Wow, what is next? So, you know, you just talked about your your planning for this this year and the motto y'all came out with. For us, it's it's a year of results, right? We've grown and we've grown and we've grown, and now I've I've said, okay, let's focus on what we've got. Let's get really good at what we're doing, and let's um, build our our staff up. You know, you know, as you grow, you can catch yourself in kind of outgrowing your staffing, and staffing is a real issue in our industry right now. So um, we're we're slowing it down a bit to make sure that we're focused on results, and then let the results and let a, let the team building um, direct our next steps. So you know, really, this year it's about focusing, getting better at each ro- location, and then let the the future growth. Um, kind of come out of the results of 2018 taking care of the small stuff absolutely yeah. and you can't just keep running 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 at some <laughs> point you got you got to take care of what you've what you've already earned and take yeah. care of the investments you already have on the ground yeah yeah i agree uh, people you know they're the ones that make the experience um and the product they put on the on the table for your for your customers but you know i i think of the the my favorite restaurants, my favorite places to go. Mm. It has nothing to do with the food. It has to do with the experience. It, it, the the, experience. it, it yeah. how I feel when I walk in the door, and I'm immediately recognized, and I'm welcomed, and I'm I'm treated better than probably I should be for the you know yeah. the amount of time I spend. It just they make you feel special. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a certain type of person to be able to to make that happen. Um, what do you look for in people, and how do you find the best? Yeah, so this is widely known throughout our company. We seek people with a servant's heart. That's where we start. When we're interviewing people, they may not have the skills. They may not have ever been in our industry. We can teach the skills, but what we can't teach and what we can't change is somebody's heart. You know, we may be able to make a difference, but ultimately their true stripes show back up. So we look for people with a servant's heart. We look for people that truly desire to please people. And that's where we start. And that's really been a big part of our competitive advantage is that, is that motto. And every interviewer knows it. Every level of our, our restaurants know it, that that's what we seek first. And, and do you do that through a series of questions, through psychological profiling? How do you how do you find that? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a matter of questions, it's a matter of listening more than mm-hmm. than talking during the interview, and uh, and letting the the person kind of express themselves and and what truly makes them happy. You know, we ask those questions: what makes you happy? What you know? What uh, what are frustrations for you? We ask those sort of things, and we just let the character kind of reveal itself. And, uh, and our, our folks are quick to pick up on people that would make a great teammate or ones that may be disruptive. Yeah, it, you know, it, 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 I think it always comes down to the people. You can have a subpar plan. You can have a subpar product. Uh, but if you have great people, um, it, you, you go a long, long way. Absolutely. Uh, uh, we entrust everything to our people. Yeah, and, and and you got to, you know, just just recently I invested uh, with uh, someone here in Atlanta. I invested in a restaurant. I I, I said I would never invest in a restaurant, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like one of those things. I'm like teaching my kids. I'm like, okay, now let me just tell you, I'm doing this, but you know, you got to be careful. It, it, it's a it's an industry that that has a, a difficult um, track record. It's tough yeah. to be successful, and that's why I'm saying hats off uh, to you for for making this thing work. Um, 
but the reason I did is that the person that is running it, I mean, he was chef of the year here in Atlanta uh, a couple of years back. Um, but it's, it, I'm investing in the guy, not Absolutely. the concept, not anything else. Um, and, and you seem like you're cut from a from a cloth that is really dedicated to taking care of not only your own people but taking care of the customers. What 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 are some of your character traits that you attribute for your success? Well, you know, I, and I've, I've said it already, but you know, it's uh, being a people pleaser. I love to see people happy, and and I'm willing to go to great lengths to make that you know, uh, to have that encounter with somebody. Uh, so that's probably the number one. I, I think I'm a likable person. So I'm, I'm real approachable and, I, and I'm real at ease at approaching people at my restaurant. But I build a lot through community too. So we're extremely involved in our community. Um, we we kind of give to get kind of philosophy. Yeah. We talk about that a lot, you know, sometimes in charitable uh, contributions, it, it doesn't always make great business sense but sometimes you just do what's best for the community and then it comes back to reward you so we we look at that aspect too so you know i think it's it just really gets to the core of who i am and and what drives me um i'm a man of faith and, and i love to 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 be around people that are happy and joyful and i like to spread the same yeah you have a very infectious uh, um energy about you <laughs> <Thank Right>? you. <laughs> <laughs> you do i mean you just it's like you know i, I want to come over for dinner <laughs> absolutely <laughs> as i was going through this we're Let's make that happen <laughs> we're recording this uh and you know in the afternoon i'm going through i'm like well, that looks good i'm, I'm getting hungry <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i like that in 2008 you know, we went through a very difficult time, 2008, 9, 10, yeah, 11. Yeah. What did you find in the restaurant business? What, what what was going on? Were people cutting back and not going as often? Were they using that as their entertainment? What what, what happened to your business during yeah. that time? Well, you know, it's it's no secret that we grew during that period. I mean, it was, wow. it was a time of growth for us. Um, but my theory behind that was is, is that – um, people were still going to go out. They just weren't going to spend as much as they used to. So we wanted to be in the comfort food realm. We wanted to, to be in the in a, in a place where people could come and, and, and feel the laughter and joy no matter what was going on in their life. And so we had a trickle-down effect. We're, we're a, a family-owned, family-run restaurant that offers, you know, kind of a, um, a moderate price. So we, we work on turns more than we would work on profit margin so um the higher end restaurants struggled there's yeah. no doubt about it yeah. they struggled people were coming less often and sometimes not coming at all and you saw some very high-end restaurants doing things that they said they would never do like put a hamburger on their menu and things like mm -hmm. that uh, but for those that didn't adjust uh, they lost market share during that time and um and people like us were, were benefits of that where people wanted to get out they just weren't going to spend as much and uh, and so the that kind of that middle price range and lower um, picked up some some volume during that time and and we certainly did and um, and we treated the people you know I told all my all my staff was people aren't coming in here to hear your problems they're coming in here to have an experience to laugh and to forget about whatever else may be going on right now. So let's make it fun. And, and we did that during that period and focused on that. And we grew tremendously during that period. Uh, did you notice, was there any shift in alcohol sales? Uh, do you, do, first of all, do you sell alcohol mm -hmm. in your restaurants? We do, okay. yes. Was there any shift in alcohol sales during that period? Was that a higher? Uh, <laughs> I, I think I drank a little bit more during that period. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing, nothing significant uh, changes. Okay. Nothing that, that told us that, oh my gosh, you know, people are drinking more, drinking less. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It pretty much stayed in flow with, uh, with the food. Okay. Foods. Yeah. I had, I had read something, um, I guess 2011, 2012, and it talked about how uh, the movie industry and the casual food, the, the comfort food industry was doing really well because mm -hmm. um, the, they weren't going and spending a lot of money, but they still wanted to be entertained. And the yeah. movies gave them a, a chance to kind of escape. Um, mm -hmm. And the same thing with you know the restaurants. They still wanted to go out. They wanted to have that experience. They just didn't want to spend a lot of money uh, doing it. 
Absolutely. Yeah, what, which one's your, your favorite concept? Oh, my. That's like, which is my favorite <laughs> child, right? All right. This will just be between <laughs> us. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> well, there's no doubt that the Puckett's, uh, the Puckett's brand, the Puckett's grocery is kind of fueling the rest of our growth. Okay. And so um, – so that I have a real affinity for, for the Puckett's grocery brand. Um, it's the one that continues to grow. We have five of those now. And then we have four other one-offs right now uh, that may prove to do more of them. I don't know. But it's usually the last one that we're doing because it needs the most nurturing, the most love, most caring. And Deacon's New South is our latest uh, launch. It's a, it's a dry aging um, southern restaurant, so we've got a dry aging room. We're mm. take, taking some of the concepts of Chicago meats and bringing them uh, here to Nashville. And then the, the Art Deco um, of, of New York City and kind of, blended those two Chicago and New York and put it right in downtown Nashville. It's a fabulous restaurant. And right now I, I, you know, I couldn't think of a better place I'd like to be or eat than at Deacon's new South. It's, it's a fun concept too. And it sounds like the price point on that is higher. It is. Okay. It is because you dry aging, right? Yeah. You know, and you're losing 30% of the, your, your meat's weight, but even our hamburgers are dry aged and we're making our own hot dogs from wow. dry aged meats. So, I mean, we're doing, Everything, 100% from scratch. It's just an amazing um, job that our staff is doing there. Very, yeah, I, I was cool. when you were saying dry aging, I was thinking we have chops here in Atlanta. Right, uh, love which chops. Is dry, yeah, dry aging. And, and I equate to dry, you know, here at Chops, when we talk about that restaurant, I just – uh, I think about money just leaving my wallet in in, in large increments. <laughs> right, the tomahawk steak and the uh, oh the uh, country fried uh, lobster. Yes, <laughs> yes, all of that is really good. Yeah. But you know, it's at least you know a buck and a quarter ahead. Uh, you know, when you're done, it's like, how did yeah. I just spend 125 dollars on dinner? Right. Um, yeah, yeah. We we kind of position ourselves to kind of be below the Jeff Ruby's and the Bob Steakhouse and places like Chops. We kind of positioned ourselves by putting on composed Southern meals in there too, uh, to be positioned below them, but but higher than our puckets. So, uh, but we're not far from them. I'm, uh, you just can't do it without dry, you know, dry aging and, and be yeah. be inexpensive. And, and the puckets, what's what's driving the success there? What do you think the the secret to success in that? Yeah, I think it's the experience. Um, ah. You know, it, it is it is that hometown place that everybody knows your name when you come in. You know, it's when Pam sees you coming through the door, she knows you like half sweet, half unsweet tea, so she meets mm. you at your table with it and things like that. It's um, it's all about our people. It's all about the experience. Um, music has always been a component of that, but music is not a successful business plan, right? It's just, it's just an additive to the experience and it, it actually, you know, costs to do music. So a lot of people say, well, we love the music, love the experience, but it's the experience that keep coming back to over and over and over. Yeah. The food is great. The service is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the winning rep- recipe. Everybody's interested in success. However, only a few are really committed to it. What's the difference? Those that are committed are willing to do whatever it takes in order to get their outcome, in order to get their goals. If you're not getting the results you need and want, chances are it's accountability. Who's holding you accountable? I've got a challenge for you. For one month, 30 days, and $95, our team will hold you accountable for what you said you were going to get done in that month to get your goals, get your outcomes done. If, at the end of 30 days, you don't like the results or you just didn't like the system, we'll give you your money back. The question is, are you interested or are you committed? Keep an eye out for part three of our interview with Andy, where he tells us the number one secret to being a great listener, in addition to why having a positive outlook will take you further, faster. See you next time on... Peak Performers Podcast.